Hey guys, uh, so today I'm going to do a as thorough a review as possible in the analytic geometry unit part one. So I'm talking about the median of a triangle, uh, finding the uh, equation of the right bisector, uh, finding the equation of a circle given a point, finding the equation, finding the radius given an equation, um, things like that. So I'm going to uh, do a bit of <laughs> a bit of a review of that right now. So let's say I'm given two points. I'm going to start with the midpoint. That's concept number one. Okay. So I'm given two points, um, and I could give them uh, algebraically. So for example, you've got 4a and 7b, and I want to find the midpoint between these two. Well, I do the midpoint calculation by the following. I take the x's, and I add them up and divide by 2, and I take the y's and I add them up and I divide by 2. So let's do that now. 2a plus 4a all over 2. That will give me the x-coordinate of the midpoint. And then to get the y-coordinate, you go 3b plus 7b over 2. That gives me the y-coordinate. And there it is. And so what do I get? Well, 2a plus 4a is 6a. And when you divide 6a by 2, you get 3a. Okay, so basically you get 6a on top over 2, and over here you got 10b over 2, and those will reduce. Half of 6 is 3, so that's 3a, and half of 10 is 5, so you got 5b. So that is the midpoint. Done. So that is an example of midpoint calculations. Okay, and I can do this with fractions as well. So let's say I have 1 over 3 comma, let's say, you know, 5 over 2. And in the next point, I've got, let's say, uh, you know, 5 over 3 here, but I have, let's say, 3 over 2. Okay, and I want to find the midpoint. Well, I do the same thing. I take the x's, I take the y's, I add them up and I divide by 2. Well, I'm adding up whole fractions here. And the denominator is already the same. So that's the x. I take the x's, add them up, and I divide by 2. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to take the y's, add them up, and I divide by 2. Now, 1 over 3 plus 5 over 3 is 6 over 3. So really, this is 6 over 3 in the top, all over 2. And over here, I get 8 over 2, all over 2. 6 over 3 happens to be 2. And then 2 over 2 ends up being 1. This, you know what? Here, I should do it this way. 6 divided by 3 divided by 2 is the same thing as saying 6 over 6 because these two over here will actually combine. And so will these two. And so really on the right side, you also have 8 over 4. And so what do I get? 6 over 6 happens to be 1, and 8 over 4 happens to be 2. And so that's that midpoint. So basically all I'm doing here is I'm adding up the x-coordinates, dividing by 2, and adding up the y-coordinates, and dividing by 2. That's about it. That's the midpoint. <clears throat> now, I could give you two points, and I want you to find the length. Two points. So let's say the length of line segment AB, where A is 5, 5, and B is, uh, let's say, I don't know, 4, 4. This is going to be a really easy calculation, okay? But basically, I just want to get the point across. So you've got the x-coordinates. And you've got the y-coordinates. So all you have to do is use this formula. So you subtract the x's and you subtract the y's. Hey, oops. Subtract the x's and subtract the y's. 
So let's do that now. So go 4 minus 5. So I'm going b minus a basically. 4 minus 5 squared plus 4 minus 5 squared twice. Okay? And what do I get? Well, the square of 4 minus 5 is 1. So I get 1 over here. That's what this is. And then over here, I also get 1. And so this turns into the square root of 2. Okay? Now, if I wanted as an exact answer, I'd be done. But if I wanted to take it further, all I'd have to do is square root 2. And when I do that, I get 1.41. So I can also write that L is 1.41 to two decimal places. And that dot here means that I've approximated. So that's it. That's length. So I've done midpoint. I've done length. Midpoint. And I've done length. So what's next? Now, let's say I've got this drawing here. I've got a median and I've got a triangle. Let's say I've got points A, B, C. A is 6, 6. B is 8, 10. And C is 12, 16. Now these points aren't obviously accurate. I haven't drawn it accurately at all. But I want the median from A. I want that equation, mx plus b. That's what I want. How do I go about doing that? Well, I start with a line from A. That is the equation that I want. That is the line that I want to find the equation of. I need this, y equals mx plus b. Okay, so this is all given to you, assuming, right? And I want to find this equation right here. So I need m and I need b. Well, what do I do first? Well, the median cuts into BC at the midpoint of BC. So the first step would probably be to find the midpoint of BC. So I have a capital M here and I'm writing BC. So to find the midpoint of BC, I just go 8 plus 12 all over 2, two and then 10 plus 16 all over 2. And that midpoint just happens to be, let's see, 20 over 2, 10... And over here, 10 plus 16 is 26 over 2, 13. So that's that midpoint. That is the coordinates of this point right here. Now, if I want to find the equation, I, I now have two points. I find the slope next. So the slope is going to be 13 minus 6 all over 10 minus 6. I did that by doing y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I have x2, y2 here, and I have x1, y1 here. So I'm just using my slope formula, basically. 13 minus 6 is 7, 10 minus 6 is 4, and that is the slope of my line. So now I've got this slope right here. That slope is 7 over 4. I still need to find b. So what I do is I plug in a point, x and y, and the slope, and I find B. So I can use this midpoint that I found. That's the whole idea. So I go 13 equals to 7 over 4 times 10 plus B. And when you do that, you put a 1 under, underneath the 10, and you get 70 over 4 plus B equals to 13. Then you have to move the 70 over 4 over to find b. And then you do a common denominator. And so to do a common denominator, you multiply the bottom and the top by 4. <clears throat> and 4 times 13 is 52. 52 minus 70 all over 4 just happens to be negative 18 over 4. And if you reduce that quantity, you get a b that is negative 9 over 2. And so once I have my b and my m slope, I can write my equation. y equals 7 over 2x minus 9 over 2. I believe 7 over 4. I believe it's 7 over 4.
There it is. Yep, so that is the equation of the median line. That is the equation of this red line right there. So that equation is 7 over 4x minus 9 over 2. So that's basically what we're aiming for with the median. <clears throat> now, if you want the right bisector, let's take the BC of the last question, and let's do a right bisector question. So right bisector of B810 and C1216. believe those were the coordinates of the points. Yep, 8, 10, 12, 16. So the right bisector is a line that cuts through a line segment down the middle at a right angle. So all you have to do is draw a line down the middle as best as you can. You need to find the equation of the red line. And since it's down the middle, we call that the midpoint. And if we're using B and C here, the same B and C from the last question. We already know that midpoint, but we're going to calculate it again anyway. So you go 8 plus 12 over 2, and 10 plus 16 over 2, and you get 10 comma 13. Okay, so that is the midpoint right there. What do you do next? Well, you find the slope of this line. So you find lowercase m of BC. And then because of this 90 degree angle right there, you have to flip it to get that one. It's called the negative reciprocal. <clears throat> so to get lowercase m, the slope of BC, this is what you do. You go 16 minus 10 all over 12 minus 8. What do you get? Well, you get 6 on the top, you get 4 on the bottom, and so you get 3 over 2. But that is not the slope of the red line. That is the slope of the white line because I used BC, right? So I did um, X2, Y2, and X1, Y1, and I fired through the slope calculation. So to get the slope of the red line, all you have to do is flip it. So you go negative 2 over 3. So that is M. That is my slope, the slope of the line that I want. Okay, so I want this MX plus B. I already have it now. I have M. To find B, I plug in a point. So in this case, I'm going to plug in the midpoint again. So I'm going to go 13 equals negative 2 over 3 times 10 plus B. And I'm going to find the y-intercept. So I get negative 20 over 3 plus B equals to 13. You move this over. Common denominator it. And you find B. Multiply the top and bottom by 3. That is going to be 39 plus 20. It's 59 over 3 equals B. And so Y equals negative 2 over 3X plus 59 over 3. That right there is the equation of that red line. Y equals negative 2 over 3X plus 59 over 3. And that's the right bisector. And then last but certainly not least, we've got <clears throat> circles. Okay, so circles have this equation. They are centered at the same point. They're centered at 0, 0. Okay, let's say I ask for the radius of this equation. All you have to do is square root the right side, and that's because over here I've got R2 equals to 100. So what that means is R2 is 100. So to get R, you just square root the number on the right side. Done. So R is going to be 10. Okay, it's that simple. What if I ask you to write the equation given a point 2, 4? All you do is you plug in the information that's provided for you. You're provided an x and you provided a y. So all you do is you go 2 squared plus 4 squared equals to r squared, and you calculate r2. 
2 squared is 4, this is 16, and so R2 totals to about 20. And so if you have the entire value for R2, just replace R2 with 20. And so your equation is going to be x2 plus y2 equals to 20. Done. Next, I might give you an equation like this, and I might say, is this point inside, on, or outside the circle? In that case, all you have to do is plug in this x and this y and check. So if you plug it in, you get 1 squared plus 2 squared equals 2, 1 plus 4, which happens to be 5. And 5, if you notice, 5 is less than 20. So that number 5 that I got from this point is less than 20 from the equation. So what I do then is I say that this point right here is inside, inside this circle. That's it. If this total happened to be bigger than 20, I would say it's outside. And if this total was equal to 20, I would say it is on the circle. It's that simple. Okay? <clears throat> and if you want the shortest distance, we're going to do one more question. So if you want the shortest distance, all you have to do is you're given a line and you're given a point, let's say. If you want the shortest distance between those two, you have to plot each thing. So you have to plot each um, item. So you got to plot the point. So 2, 5 is right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 2, 5. And you have to plot the line. The line is going to be at... It's going to be at a y-intercept of 3. And you go up 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1. Up 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1, and so on. So you got a line. So this line right here is supposed to represent y equals 3x plus 3. And this point represents the point that are given. So these are both given to you. You plot each, and the shortest distance is basically going to be the length of that red line going across. So you're supposed to make a t that's perpendicular. And that length is going to be determined by an equation. So over here, this point right here is 1, 6. That is 2, 5. So you fire both of those into the equation for length. And it's going to be x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So you just fire those through the equation. So you get square root of... Um, Let's see, 2 minus 1 squared plus 5 minus 6 squared, and you get your final answer, which happens to be the square root of 1 plus 1, and you end up getting, you end up getting square root of 2. And that's about it. That's basically the analytic geometry unit 1. Um, hope that was informative. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.